All right, guys, what we're going to do, we're going to start out, we're going to talk about rods and reels. Okay? Everybody's got to have one to catch fish. Now, what I don't want you to think, I see all these rods over here, $2,000 worth of rods sitting here. The moral of this story is you don't have to have $2,000 worth of rods. What it is is understanding the tool. Okay? When I started working with my dad on a pickup truck, if I grabbed a crescent wrench, he'd beat me with the proper wrench. Okay? Crescent wrench is not the best tool to use. Fishing's the same way. They make things easier. Okay? An example to you, you know that I love to drop shot and do all that, and you guys probably got the DVD, and hopefully you've learned things from it, and you're catching fish. But the tool right here in making this combination is a huge deal. And what I'm going to do as an example to you, I took a buddy of mine up to Spokane Arm in June. You can go up there in June, guys, catch a hundred and a half fish. No big deal. When we're done with this, you'll know what you got to do. Okay, when we get to the walleye day. But he shows up, first time I'd taken him, Mike Allen. You've probably seen him on the show. Took him up there, said, Mike, how many fish you want to catch? If I get a half a dozen, that'd be great. We're going to have a half a dozen and eight casts. Okay. Showed up that day, and he's one of those guys that he doesn't like to use your equipment. And when you go with Seth Burl, anything in my boat is yours. Because we're here to catch fish. Okay. Shows up. He's got one of them yellow ugly sticks that he's had probably since 1970. A spinning reel that you land marlin with. And some big old line and whatnot. And I said, Mike, just, you know, I got 12 rods in the boat. Just pick one up. No, I'm not going to do it. All right. We go. I make 10 casts. I got eight fish. Mike's in the back of the boat. Oh, man, what am I doing wrong? Well, guys, what it boiled down to, anybody that fishes with me knows that I watch rods. I may be doing my own thing, but out of the corner of my eye, I'm watching your rod. Okay? Especially with light biter fish, chicken walleyes and such. What was happening with that big rod was he could not feel the strike. Okay? I started watching his rod, and I could see his line, tong, call it shocking. Tong. I'd say, Mike, set the hook. He set the hook. Well, how do you do that? Well, so many years of fishing, I just know to see it. So finally, by the end of the day, I got him using one of my rods, and he's catching fish just as fast as I am. Okay? And people say it can't be the rod. It is the rod. Okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to cover, when you pick up a rod, you guys, guys in the store, oh, oh, is this? Oh. I see it all the time, you know? What are you doing? Well, that's what you do. That's what guys do. They may not know why they're, but that's what they do. Okay? So we're going to tell you how to pick a rod up and go, this is the one I want. Okay? Like I said, I'm not up here to sell you $2,000 worth of rods. I'm here to put the proper tool in your hand. Okay? Let's start out with a rod built for sensitivity. What you're looking for. Okay? This is a drop shot rod. Do you have to use it just for drop shot? No. I use my drop shot rods for jig fishing, as they're sensitive. I use them for Sanko fishing, skipping Sankos, a little bit long for that. Okay? But you can use it for multiple things when sensitivity is a key. Okay? You throw a Sanko out there that's got no weight on it, you can't feel hardly anything, guys. You've got to have the proper tool. And that fish hits it to set the hook. Okay, so what am I looking for when I pick up a rod that I want for sensitivity? First, when you look at it, and it's getting easier, you know, Fenwick's got a series out, Elite Tech. They tell you right on it, drop shot. No, nah, that's the one I need. So it says it right on it. But I don't think too many in the room are going to go out and, and pay $219 for a rod. Okay? I myself, I do it for a living. I got to have the right tools, so I'll do it. You get to write it off. I get to write it off. So far, I've written off about $750,000. <laughs> I'm getting good at it. Okay? But anyway, that's another story. When you pick this up, guys, and you look at this, you'll see all these, e this one here, ESDS, that's Elite Tech Series Drop Shot. That is not important to you. Then we come to the first set of numbers, 610. 610. Well, that's 6 feet 10 inches. Okay? When you want sensitivity, you want six and a half shortest to seven foot. 
That gives you that sensitivity. Okay? So the next thing we come to, it says ML. What is that? That is medium light. Okay. What does medium light be? When I used to pick up rods as a kid, you basically had, oh, that's a fast action rod and that's a slow action rod. It didn't have all this other jargon on here. Okay? What it meant back in the day to have a slow action rod versus a fast. Slow action rod, when I push down on this and I break it in half, when I push down on it, see how it's bending from here out? See this? Basically from the handle out. Okay? That's a slow action. A fast action would be a rod that you stick down and we'll show you, and just the tip bends. And that's all you had. That's how you made your decision. Fast action was sensitivity, slow action was trolling or cranking. Through making the rods, I went down and, and saw a rod builder and how they build them. Very interesting. Okay, they start out with a mandrel, stainless steel blank. They in turn wrap that graphite and glass combination, some are using other fibers, into the rod. Okay? What the medium light means is your power. That's your power, okay? The power on a rod, see where this color changes right here? See this, guys? Your power is being created in this section right here, okay? So when you pick it up and it says M, medium, MH, medium heavy, that's the power that's back here. Now, it still doesn't make a lot of sense to you, okay? Now, you go down one more and it says dash, XF. What is that? That is extra fast. Fast and extra fast are the most sensitive rods you can put in your hand. It's what you have to have for drop shot fishing, vertically jigging, okay, Senko fishing, a lot of times worm fishing, anything where sensitivity is required. Moving the bait slowly, feeling a light twitch, okay. So what does extra fast mean? Well, guys, watch this. Watch the end of that tip when I shake this rod. Now look at my hand. See how I'm not moving it much? That extra fast is built in from about here out. Okay? See when I hold it in my hand like this? See how much flex is right here? That's all that in the tip. That's what you want. Okay? That's what you want. So now you go, okay, I know what the power means. I know what extra fast means. You're still maybe off a little bit on the power. And you come down and you go, well, it says eighth ounce to half ounce. Well, that's obviously the lure that it can handle. And you can throw under an eighth ounce with it, guys. It's not, the eighth ounce thing is not key, okay? If you try to go three quarter ounce and you whip it hard, you may break it. That's just giving you parameters for the way to lure to throw. Okay? If you stay within that zone, that weight, it's going to create the most sensitivity for you. That's what that zone is indicating. Okay? So now you're starting to get, okay, get out to the end. Four to ten line. Now this one says I can only use trilene, so I will only use trilene because it won't work with anything else. Okay? Four to ten pound test. What does that mean? This is where the power comes in, okay? This rod, if you put two pound on it and you get to horsing around on a fish, the rod is gonna overpower the two pound and it's gonna break the line, okay? If you put 12 pound on here and you got the drag down tight and you give a, my buddy Chad Kaiser sitting in the back back there, the most ferocious hook set you've ever seen in your life. And we'll get to that when we get to the lines later. <coughs> but if you get a Chad Kaiser hook set going with a 12 pound test to drag down tight, they're telling you that you may overpower the rod and break the rod. Okay? That's what those zones mean. Okay? The other thing you gotta have is weight. You pick this dude up, oh, it's nice and light. Okay? What does the weight do? Weight increases sensitivity. When we get to the reels, you're going to see what I'm talking about. I hate seeing somebody buy a nice rod like this and hang a big old 
ocean cast and should have a 20 foot pole and four pounds of lead for the pier on it. Okay? The lighter the rod, the more sensitive it is. So now you've built the right setup. Okay? See these guides? Look at that. That's titanium. Okay? If you're clumsy, you weigh 300 pounds, you step on things, they break. Okay? Durability, great. Biggest difference, you look at the older rods, guys, they got big, huge feet on them. And the feet is what connects the eye to the rod. Okay? Titanium, the newest product out, extremely lightweight, doesn't take away from the sensitivity. Okay? So you want to make sure you get all this stuff. And you can go pick up a dollar, $34.95 drop shot rod. If you really start looking at it and handling it, it's heavy. It may say fast, but it's not going to feel right. It'll have big, huge guides. We don't like ceramic inserts. We like a stainless steel foot to save the money. Or if you got the money, we like the recoil titaniums because it's light. Okay. So keeping that going, drop shot rod. How many of you here like to fish crankbaits? Everybody better raise their hand. I'm coming out there. <laughs> okay. When we get done with this class, you're all going to be throwing crankbaits, I can guarantee it, because I'm going to make you. Okay. I'm going to make you. Okay. When you look, look at this, look at that noodle. Okay. Crankbait rod has to be sensitive, but has to be slow. Okay. So if you look at this dude, watch that tip. Not even putting any weight on it yet. You guys all see that? I mean, it's just sitting there. Now, when you crank down on that, see that right there? Remember that pole I told you my buddy had? That big yellow ugly stick? That's what he had. See how limber that is? Okay. The reason why, and this is a hybrid, okay? Graphite with glass back here. Fiberglass out here. Okay. Crankbait rod, if you look through this, once again it tells you it's crankbait, but odds of you grabbing one that's crankbait, once again, 219 bucks, you may not do it. Okay. We go through. Gives me all the stuff here about the rod. I look, okay, 70. Seven foot, right? M. Medium power. Remember how that other one was medium light and it was bending all the way up? Remember that? See what's happening there? See how it's getting to about right here and it's quitting the bend? See that? We're getting, we're getting stouter back here. Okay. If we go to the next step, it's MF, moderately fast, okay? What does moderate mean? Well, see how it's all limber right here? But yet, see the tip? Still fast, but it's not extra fast or just fast, okay? The line and the lure, quarter to five eighths, now, can you imagine putting a bait caster on here in a quarter ounce lure? A lot of guys will go, no way. No way it's going to bird nest. When you go to cast this, guys, that little lure on there, as you come forward, it's all absorbed. If you try to throw a light bait on a stiff rod, you're going to have crows, just a beautiful nest. Crows right in here living, all bird nested up. It's beautiful. Okay? You gotta have this limber section to throw a quarter ounce bait on here. You gotta have it, okay? So once again, we go up to five eighths, okay? You can go over it. They're just saying if you crank down on it, you may break it, okay? Now what you're saying, line-wise, eight to 14, we know what that means, okay? Seth, why do I have to have a limber noodle rod like this for cranking, okay? If I put this rod on the floor, and I got a bait on it, and I drag it across the carpet, and you guys just put your foot on that bait, what it does, as you put your foot on it, 
the rod absorbs it. Okay? Anytime you're moving a bait through the water, that fish is going to go, Wah! they're going to hit it fast because it's moving. Okay? When they hit the bait fast, if you got a rod that is extremely fast, again, stiff, you're going to rip it away from them. You're going to rip it away from them. Okay? And I don't know how it happens, guys. I have cat-like reflexes, and that bait goes through the water. I cannot grab it without hooking myself. I don't know how they do it. Okay? And I don't really have cat-like reflexes. Kind of slow. But they can grab that thing, and the problem is, is they grab it, as soon as you feel that initial grab, oh, Chad Kaiser hooks that. But Chad knows how to run a crankbait rod, so it's okay. Okay? What happens is it just gives a little bit of a delay for him to suck it in. It doesn't allow you to feel it. The rod just all of a sudden, boom, loads up. And guys, a lot of times, you don't even hardly set the hook with this thing, and it's buried. Okay? When they come up and they're jumping, doing all their thing, taking care of it for you okay cranking rod now real brief spinnerbait rod how many people throw spinnerbaits oh whew, man I got a lot to teach okay same principle guys spinnerbaits traditionally heavier than crankbait so now see how see how much shorter this glass section is Reason being is I need more power. Medium, heavy. Okay. Oh man, Whew. shouldn't ate that subway that fast. Three eighths to three quarter ounce. We've bumped up the weight of the bait we're able to throw. Okay. But that spinner bait's cranking through the water. He still has to be able to suck it in. Okay. So we've got that soft tip there, but because of the weight of the bait, and usually a little bit bigger hook on a spinner bait, we've got to be able to lay the wood a little harder. We've got to have that there to control the cast. Okay? As the medium heavy went up, 12 to 17 pound test line. Okay? 12 to 17 line. You guys starting to get how that's going? How it's playing up? <coughs> 